my name is Robin. Uh, I work in an institute called Sidelife Lab in Sweden. Um, most of what I do is usually human whole genome uh, analysis data, uh, analysis. And uh, today I'm going to talk about the output of such an analysis. And uh, luckily it's pretty standardized. And by standardized, I would say all the files end with VCF. Uh, we heard talks uh, previous today that it's a legacy format, but I digress. Uh, <coughs> actually, the stuff inside the VCF is hardly standardized. So this is just one line, uh, all the annotations that we have for just a single variant. Um, so it's pretty clear that this can't be the, the end result of an analysis. You can't really make sense of this. You have to process it some more. So this is what we set out to do. Um, and certainly there's uh, a lot of motivations to do more robust tools that can scale up to maybe thousands of samples and, and so on uh, with dedicated databases. But we wanted to also kind of find a niche where we have a tool that's super easy to install, intuitive to use, uh, et cetera. Uh, and maybe for more of a research case where you have a VCF, you have all the annotations already in the VCF and you just want to visualize it in a more intuitive way. So this is what we built, uh, Puzzle. Um, <clears throat> and you can install it. Uh, it's built on uh, Python. We use a Flask server that we spin up in the background uh, and a very lightweight backend uh, in SQLite. So you can install it with pip and soon also with uh, Conda, we hope. Uh, and here I'm just downloading some, some sam sample data, some VCF files. Uh, and if you've used uh, multi-QC, we follow a similar pattern where we just point to uh, a folder and it will try to figure out what files in that folder structure uh, that it can visualize. So it will list them here on the left side, uh, all the VCFs that it finds uh, and all the samples that are included in those VCF files. So if we dig into one of the VCFs, uh, you will see a list of all the uh, variants. Uh, you will see some, some chose um, annotations that we pick out uh, and you can further kind of drill down, uh, filter them on uh, frequency scores, uh, severity scores like the CAD score, uh, or uh, other filters like uh, inheritance models if you do trio analyses, for example. You can also go into individual variants, uh, and here you will then kind of, we try to visualize everything that we can pick out from, from, these anal uh, from, the, from the annotations of, of the variants. So we support the uh, VEP and SNPF and so on. And you'll see the, the genotype call and also the, you can make comments. So you can make comments on, on a variant level. Uh, you can also make comments on case level. You can add HPO terms and that's what we store then in the, in the backend. We support both uh, VCFs uh, and BCFs uh, as well as Gemini databases. <coughs> so if we find a Gemini database, we will also include that in the list of, of, uh, of files. Uh, we have separate uh, viewers, views for both single nucleotide variants as well as uh, structural variants. And uh, structural variants is actually where we've seen the most uptake. Uh, so I haven't heard that much about structural variations here at BOSC, uh, but it's certainly something that's happening a lot in our lab. People are actually starting to like uh, use it and try to like investigate that in, in diagnostic purposes. Uh, <clears throat> so we have separate views so you don't actually view them at the same time, but usually you'd have then, I guess, a VCF with single nucleotides and small insertions, deletions, and another one with uh, structural variations. Um, yes, the, the project is up on GitHub. You can go there, read, uh, read me, hopefully, and you can test out the service uh, and the tool. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.